Hi, good morning everyone. I'm here at the monastery and I wanted to share with you that I am completely in love with the 23rd Psalm. It, it's showing up everywhere. <laughs> um, I've been singing it in the chapel, some of the lyrics, the lyrics from this beautiful, beautiful psalm. And I just want to share with you the, the, oh, the depth of it. It's, I feel like it's, it's the walk, it's the journey, it's, it's the prayer, it's the promise, it's the guidance, it's the truth. Uh, and it's a profound and beautiful teaching of forgiveness, the whole thing. So... Yeah, what I've really been singing out is, He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. Oh, He restoreth my soul. He Restoreth my soul, makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, and he restoreth my soul. Oh, he restoreth my soul. I wasn't expecting them to be singing, <laughs> but yeah, I just I just want to share the whole thing because it's it's so beautiful. I like to know the Lord is my shepherd. It literally, literally, when you one hundred percent welcome this truth, the Lord is my shepherd. That means. He is my guide. That means I'm just a lambkin being guided by Christ. He is my shepherd. Therefore, he is taking care of everything. He is in charge of everything. I shall not want. Like, isn't that a natural direction for the mind, for our mind to be able to release desires and wants for anything like if you truly know the Lord is my shepherd and he is providing everything then that means I shall not want I they go together hand in hand if I think I'm in charge or I'm worried about what I might need I have want I have desire but if the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want what, what, what would I need to worry about if, if he is holding me in his arms and literally guiding the plan of the atonement? <laughs> and what will he do? What will he, how will he guide us? He'll make me lie down in green pastures. Doesn't that sound like a course of miracles? I need to nothing. I rest in God. I am as God created me. Like, literally, what does Christ want? What does God want for us? He wants us to lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. So when the mind becomes turbulent, He will lead me beside still waters. If I just remember this, He restoreth my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. And then he goes on to clarify the journey. It is a journey through the darkness to the light, no doubt about it. Described as being a valley of the shadow, you know, of death. And that's what it feels like when you're going through the darkness to the light. 
it is like going through a, a, a valley. It is facing a shadow. It's facing the dark thoughts, the doubt thoughts, fear, guilt, oh. the belief in an external enemy. Like that's the greatest fear there is. It's actually the only fear that there is, is this belief that there is an external authority other than the Lord being my shepherd, taking care. If I believe I'm in control, then, or if I desire personal control, then I, of course, will perceive an external authority because I've already perceived myself as an external authority, not God as my authority. And the playing out of this external authority gets very dark in the mind and fearful. And then our brothers are perceived as enemies. And it's all in this psalm. He says, actually, in the presence of thine enemies, I prepare a table for you. Which sounds a lot like the holiest place on earth is where an ancient hatred has become a present love. That's a quote from The Course in Miracles. The holiest spot on earth is where an ancient hatred has become a present love. So if we are facing off with our enemy, oh, there are so many teachings where he's pointing to this. Take the stranger in. Love one another as I have loved you. Turn the other cheek. Forgive 77 times 7. Like this is a practice. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of willingness. A lot of facing. Facing. It feels like you're walking through the, the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. Facing the death wish. But he is beside me. Laying a table. And isn't that the experience when a miracle comes? Where we see we've been misperceiving and it's our own mind calling for forgiveness to perceive things differently and then the next line you know he anoints me with oil and my cup runneth over that's the miracle right there that's the effect of the miracle the total shift of perception to oh my god i am sitting at the table i'm surrounded by love there's such abundance, there's such mercy, there's grace. There's nothing but God. Nothing but God. And then that's the final part of the psalm. No. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me or be with me. I'm paraphrasing here because I haven't I haven't memorized memorized it I've just taken it into my heart and surely goodness and mercy will 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 be with me all the rest of my days and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever this is our journey this is our this is the truth of the direction of our mind is to come into healed perception dwell in the house of the Lord forever this is the happy dream when the mind is forgiven the belief in personal control, in external authority, in enemies, forgiven all doubt, all self-doubt, all mistaken identity in a self that could be separate from God. Then the mind is returned to the awareness of the kingdom of heaven. It was always here, shining. Shining in unawareness is how Jesus describes it. The kingdom of heaven is shining in unawareness until the blocks to love's awareness have been healed and then the kingdom of heaven is shining in awareness. <laughs> I'm so grateful. This truth, this ancient truth, this present truth, has been coming through transmissions, you know, for centuries, for thousands of years, saying, wake up, wake up, 
heal your misperceptions. Trust. Trust in me. Give your mind to me. Let me guide you. Let me guide you. I'll bring you home. So I will be in October um, co-facilitating the retreat called Into the Kingdom with David Hofmeister, Francis Zhu. We have uh, amazing, amazing, beautiful musicians and voice liberation facilitators here at the retreat. We have Nita Bowen, Emily, Alexander, and Svava Love. They will be sharing their spiritually inspired music, as well as um, particularly Nita and Emily will be facilitating voice liberation sessions, which are an experiential, very direct opportunity to, to heal the mind and open up to the, the true voice, the presence within that wants to, to extend. And more than anything, this, this retreat is, is a presence of non-judgment. It is an environment, um, an environment where the, the presence of love is held in such a solid way. I keep hearing perfect love casts out fear. And in the presence of perfect love, the blocks to love's awareness are able, because you feel safe, they're able to come up into awareness to be seen and to be released from the mind. So I'm very grateful to be part of this retreat and to, I'm honored to be holding this space and to be fully available to join with you and let the Holy Spirit do His work. Mm, so much love from the stillness of the canyon. Mm. Very grateful to be on this journey with you. Much love. Namaste. Mm -hmm.